All right, so we're trading the field now for the court on the Sportsmax zone as we turn our attention to the latest from the first round of the ongoing NBA playoffs, where Monday night's action saw four-time champion LeBron James being subjected to only the second first-round exit of his career following the Los Angeles Lakers' 108-106 to loss to the defending champions Denver Nuggets at the Ball Arena which saw the Nuggets wrapping up the series in five games. For both James and Denver Nuggets guard, Jamal Murray reflected on the Nuggets' dominance throughout the series. Tip your hat to them. Uh, Defending champions, super, super great team, um, super well coached, and uh, you tip your hats. I mean, they, they made the plays um, down the stretch, you know, to, uh, to, to, to win this series, and, um, you know, so... Uh, you get credit what credit is due, that's for sure. I think it's just everybody's everybody's locked in. Even when we're not making shots, we're just finding a way to to grit it out and just stay together and um, just just take the haymakers that, that they were throwing at us. So shout out to the Lakers, man. They gave us a great series. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'm just glad we got the job done on our home court. Now, James's postseason exit comes after two-time champion Kevin Durant's Phoenix Suns was swept by the Minnesota Timberwolves on Sunday, marking the first time in 20 years that neither James Durant nor Steph Curry have advanced to at least the second round of the playoffs. Well, joining us via Zoom this afternoon to assess James's exit as well as Durant's legacy is our NBA analyst, Alistair Albert. How are you, Alistair? It's been a while. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. I've been getting like withdrawal symptoms, not being able to talk to you guys about basketball. I'm happy to be back though. <laughs> yeah, happy to have you. So we'll start by, of course, James's team exiting the NBA. Uh, did you see this one coming? I did. I did, unfortunately. And you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate Ricardo is not there. I wanted to do a little bit of a, a well-being check on him. I know he's a real big Lakers fan, but you know, yeah, I think, you know, I saw this coming. Um, the, the Lakers were just outmatched and we saw it for the last 12 games against the, the Denver Nuggets, not being able to defeat, defeat them, you know, for quite some time, you know, they got swept in the finals last, last, uh, the Western Conference Finals last year, and throughout the season, opening night, the night Kobe statue was unveiled, the night um, LeBron James passed 40,000 points, you know, they were just dominated every single time that they played these Nuggets, and they were just never able to kind of figure out what the remedy was for Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, you know, that one-two tandem, and, you know, their role players, Michael Porter Jr. coming up big in that last game five, um, and everyone else, you know, it, it, it was, it's just that... The Lakers were just playing a better team, a, a team that had their number, a team that was well coached, like LeBron said. Mike Malone even said that, you know, he was preparing for adjustments that the Lakers would have made that they didn't even make. So he was prepared on all counts. And this team was just just out, outclassing the Lakers throughout. And that's what we saw with this, this series ending in five games. Yeah, you mentioned his name, Jamal Murray, but a lot of credit has to go to him because... Listening to his post-game interview, he spoke about the fact that he had a calf strain, but he could not leave his team out there. And of course, he went, he got the job done, and now the Lakers have been sent packing. Your thoughts on how he went about his season so far? Jamal Murray has been exceptional, you know, and it's still quite a wonder that he hasn't become an all-star yet, you know, in his career. But every time it's it's time for him to ramp up and kind of prove his worth and how is his value to this team during the playoffs, he steps up big time. We saw, you know, that game-winning uh, 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 fadeaway over Anthony Davis in game uh, game three was, I believe, um, and of course his his play in uh, this final closeout game uh, for the Nuggets, and he's just been able to step up and just be that other superstar really he's been a superstar in these playoffs for the last two to three years even extending back to 2020 in the bubble we saw this 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 um this ability of him being able to just get streaky hot scoring 50 points going toe-to-toe -to -toe with donovan, donovan mitchell in that first round in the, in the bubble and then just every single playoffs um since once he's been healthy and available he's just been outstanding for the nuggets and of course he was a, a, a key cog in their championship last year um and having him alongside nicholas 
Nikola Jokic doing what he's doing in the center, it, it just makes them an unstoppable force. And I think they will continue to march all the way through to the Western Conference Finals and probably get to the finals as well. Yeah, good stuff from the Nuggets. But, you know, sometimes you win and the, even... Even after that, the conversation is on the losing team. And after the game, uh, LeBron was asked, you know, if that was his last game. And I mean, it's a real question. LeBron um, has been dominating the NBA. This has been his 21st season. So, of course, everybody wants to know if they'll see him suiting up again. What are your thoughts? Will he be suiting up in the NBA again? And will he be playing for the Lakers? Well, that last question about whether he'll be playing for the Lakers is the key question right there. You know, I think he he has made it very clear in some of the statements that he's made since since exiting this playoffs that, you know, he has a family. He has a young a young kid coming up, you know, who's playing for, for USC or has just kind of entered the transfer portal right now. Uh, Bronny James, who is kind of making a decision on his career right now, um, wanting to come, become a pro or wanting to kind of go on and continue his college career. He's got a son, Bryce James, who's kind of entering high school. He has a nine year old daughter he's missed quite a lot of time so he's kind of putting in and seeping in in his his personal life that he's missed quite a lot of time from and you know power to his family being that support there for him but he's kind of starting to allude to you know this this can't go on forever but he has made it very clear last year that you know his ultimate goal is to play with Bronny if he ends, enters the NBA draft so I think we have at least one more season of LeBron maybe one or two potentially but one at least one more high level season from him whether he plays with the Lakers is another story. The Lakers, there's, there's reports coming out saying that, you know, they are actually interested in potentially drafting Bronny if, he, if, if, he, if you know, the, 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 the everything falls to them in that sort of way to allow him to be part of this team and LeBron to play with him. So that's probably a potential path that could keep LeBron in, in the Lakers, but he has an opt-out clause. He, he might decide to go elsewhere to kind of make that path, um, uh, open that path for Le uh, Bronny to play anywhere else. So, you know, we, we have no idea what's going to happen, but we are definitely going to see LeBron next next season. Uh, past that, we don't know, but he will be in a, in, a, in a uniform, an NBA uniform next season for sure. Yeah, I want to get a quick comment from you on, on Kevin Durant, um, uh, Alistair, but if you were LeBron's advisor, mm -hmm. would you advise for another, another season? I would. I would. I think he's shown that he could, he could still play high-level basketball. You know, the, what he put up last night, 39 and 11, shows, you know, at 39 years old, in his 21st season, in a closeout game, you know, the amount of, you know, ability he still has. You know, taking away any on any of the, detra the detractions, you know, and some of the, 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 the criticisms that he's gone across his career, he is a really good player still, even at this stage in his career. So, um, you know, I think, you know, if I had to advise him, I'd say, yeah, let's go out, give it another try. F forget about even Bronny coming into the league. You know, give it one more shot. It might not be with the Lakers, like we say. Where he goes is another is going to be another story in itself, and it will be a circus. But I think he still has at least one high level season season in him yet, yeah. uh, and so yeah. so we'll see how and, that goes. And we have to be reminded that he turns forty in in December. Uh, Kevin Durant also exits the playoffs. Um, a huge name in this generation of NBA basketball. Your thoughts on where his career is at at the moment? Kevin Durant, for me, when I think about him and him exiting this season, the first word that just came to mind was complicated. He leaves a very complicated legacy. And of course, he's not retiring. I'm not going to speak, speak on him like he's retiring. But just thinking back of what has happened to him since he's left Golden State, which is the key point for him and the defining moment in his career, winning those two championships that he did, becoming the finals MVP that he did, leaving the Oklahoma City Thunder like, like he did after being up 3-1 and joining that uh, uh, Golden State Warrior team. Um, and then after that, you know, Golden State winning after he left, him going to Brooklyn, things not working out and now him, him here with the Suns being one of those leaders of that team and being swept you know in the first round that says quite a lot and I think it leaves a very complicated and diluted legacy for, for, for Kevin Durant which is you know kind of part of his doing you know he it's, it's, it appears that he, he followed you know Kyrie, Kyrie Irving to Brooklyn and that probably wasn't the best decision for him um, and you know he, he went over to, to, to Phoenix 
and he he just didn't play like a leader the leader that we expected a, a champion to to be on on a team struggling for their first uh, um, um, cha championship win. So it's it's a complicated legacy, and you know I think it's really difficult for him to see him go out it, it, at this early stage in the postseason. But what we're seeing is the changing of the guard. We have Anthony Edwards coming up. We have Jason Tatum and all these guys who are ready to supplant these older superstars. And Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, LeBron James being out of the playoffs just opened. The, opens the doors for these guys to kind of become great themselves. Yeah, and you are going exactly where I wanted to, to get this discussion because uh, the generational stars that are in the back end of their careers now, Alistair, we're seeing a new generation of really young, impressive uh, basketball stars. Are, are they good enough to, to carry the baton and uh, even lift the sport to higher levels? Because there is a lot of talent we are seeing in, in, in the younger group. Absolutely. I think Anthony Edwards kind of claimed, staked his claim in wanting to be a superstar in this league and wanting to be the face of the franchise. He's, he's even articulated that very clearly, like, you know, he's ready for that challenge. And dunking on Kevin Durant the way he did, you know, in that last, um, last game, um, it, he had this impressive dunk coming off the baseline that, that had shades of Michael Jordan. You see so many memes on social media blurring um, with, with one half of his face and one half of Jordan's face put together and just showing, you know, how impactful he has been offensively for this team. And he's just become the leader, you know, a very young leader, even supplanting the previous number one pick, Carl uh, Anthony Towns on that team as a leader, um, answering his own cat, cat's questions in press conferences for him, showing how much of a leader he is for this team so yeah he's one of those guys i think is ready for that mantle jason tatum has been there he's been in the playoffs lives in the playoffs as much as he has victor Wembanyama next year is going to be out even more outstanding than he has so the league is in great hands right now and i think you know they definitely have capable young stars coming up which is just going to make next season even greater than this one as well yeah really exciting things for of course the nba alistair i always say on the show time goes when we're having fun that's it for our NBA segment, but hopefully we'll talk again soon. I, I look forward to that. Hopefully so. Talk yeah. soon. Alistair Albert, they are our NBA analysts. We're taking a quick break and come back with Interactive.